welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Jaro Breed. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Jeannie Ashray, and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and Ed Bird. <laughs> First round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of Diabolical Mastermind Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> but what does N-O-T-R stand for? Is it what he's taped over to do the video? Nuns on the run? <laughs> <laughs> is it new Osama top shot range? <laughs> is it like now on terrorists reunited? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, is it never on target? <laughs> <laughs> It's Osama's catchphrase among his friends, apparently, is nuts on the road. <laughs> it's what he says to mean sort of OK. They go, shall we go out for pasta tonight? Nuts on the road, we will. <laughs> <laughs> and does he do a motion to indicate, yeah. let's put these nuts on the road? <laughs> is, it like, is it like QVC? Is he saying, new offers this Ramadan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm liking the outfit myself. I reckon it's new Osama, Trini's recommendations. <laughs> It's not never open that rucksack, is it? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let me steer me towards the correct answer, if you can it's see. new Osama tape released, is it? it uh, yes, it is, actually, yes. Wow. Exactly Ooh. right. Well done. Yeah. 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 The answer I was looking for was new Osama tape released, the first communication from the Al-Qaeda frontman for almost three years. Experts believe the footage in which he refers to recent events to be genuine, proving Bin Laden is still alive and successfully evading capture. By the way, how do we know his film recently? Because he mentions Gordon Brown, doesn't he? He does mention Gordon Brown, yes. And but he still mentions his Blair, though, which I thought was really funny, because he did actually say the world leaders like Bush and Blair and Gordon Brown. Uh, Blair must have gotten a hard on when he heard that. You know? <laughs> Still sure, got Bowie, I'm going out. Yeah. I've resigned, but still the daddy. <laughs> <laughs> He just coughs on the tape and then they dub over stuff to make it sound recent. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed the <clears throat> burn ultimatum. <laughs> <laughs> I related to it quite a lot, actually. Yeah, he's looking, yeah, he's he's looking a that. lot smarter, isn't he, than he has in previous. I think maybe he's got a new girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the next video there'll be, like, scatter cushions about, <laughs> go over the sofa. He'll be in leather, he'll be in leather trousers. <laughs> uh, and going, anyway, and going, anyway, nuts on the road, I've got to get out of here. <laughs> Maybe that's it. It's just a, it's a whole new image shift. The next shot is just going to be a goth. Just great, just his hair brushed over. I know you all hate me, that's why I live in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> he's changed his beard, but he's wearing the same outfit that he was wearing three years ago. He's a tramp. <laughs> I'd like to see him on the video using more, like, uh, he could get, like, blue screen behind him, couldn't he? Do a bit of CGI. <laughs> what, him on a roller coaster? <laughs> yeah. President Bush, I'm skiing. <laughs> Down the mountain to you, <laughs> President Bush. <laughs> Not that, no, I'm surfing. Oh. <laughs> See if you can find me here in the Wild West, Mr. Bush. <laughs> Oh, you did not know I was such good friends with Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a he hates Jews as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was put out by the. They've got a media arm, haven't they? In the original, in the original video, there's a little thing at the top that says "produced by Al Saba Productions," which is the production arm <laughs> of Al Qaeda. Wow. Think, is, it, is that the only program they make? Do they make other ones? <laughs> the Semtex Factor. <laughs> Al Jazeebies. <laughs> <laughs> Put them in little algae. <laughs> well, you're looking at the pictures, though. He was just pissed off with people laughing at him, accusing him of looking like Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> Osama the Grey becomes Osama the Black. <laughs> but there, he looks a bit like you know those things you used to have on your pencil. Good luck, trolls. You'd pop on the end of your pencil. <laughs> He's bobbly head. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whole <laughs> video. I think just... that maybe he shaved off his beard, and this is a fake beard. Yeah. That he's wearing. I mean, if that's the case. He's the only guy that shaves in Afghanistan. How difficult can it be to find? I mean, they're selling, like, one packet of Gillette Fusion a year. <laughs> Just follow the cave that smells of Old Spice. <laughs> and we've got him. He also uses some fantastic language. Did you listen to the <coughs> tape? Nah. It kind of makes you realise. He, he said, uh, at one point, he said, uh, George Bush is like one who ploughs the sea. Yeah. He harvests nothing but failure. Which is fantastic when you contrast that with what George Bush says, which is essentially, ooh. <laughs> 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 oh, he's directly onto the internet, isn't he? That's, that's why they're getting disseminated as they are. 
And I just like the idea that he's doing his own Facebook page. <laughs> well, I must update my status. I was filled with hatred of the West, but today I'm more hungover. <laughs> Friend request from Abu Hamza. He's a messy typist. <laughs> <laughs> what did he blame big business for? Global warming. Mm -hmm. it was global warming. He also said, he talked about, yeah, he felt for people under the burden of interest related debts, insane taxes, and real estate mortgages. He's basically moving Al Qaeda into the centre because he's worried <laughs> that David Cameron has taken that ground. <laughs> And he's rebranding the, the party. At the end of that sentence, it should say, why not consolidate them into one huge loan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he's doing. He's working for Ocean Finance. <laughs> he's talking about the environment as well. He's got environmental yeah, yeah. as well. You think that's a bit rich coming from him? Without air travel, we'd never have heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but then he's trying to persuade Americans to embrace Islam. Yeah. I don't think that's going to work out, and I don't think you'd want the Americans to do it their way either. You'd get muck mosques. <laughs> By the way, back home, uh, how is Gordon Brown planning to deal with immigration? He's going to squish them, look. That's what he's going to yeah. do, everyone that comes here. <laughs> Squeeze them like an yeah. accordion. He's only going to allow... He's going to allow one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight immigrants. Eight immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> Only those people who can speak English are going to be allowed to come in skilled workers. Skilled workers. Skilled yeah. workers are going to have to show, apparently, that they have got GCSE standard English grade A to C, which is quite a high standard, given that half the people who already live in Britain aren't at that standard themselves. <laughs> They're going to have skilled workers coming into the country going, uh, oh, I say, uh, I believe in Hartford, Herefordshire and Hampshire. Uh, Harkins hardly ever happen. <laughs> and the locals will be going, do what, in it? Nim, nim, nim. <laughs> Is it the kids? Is that a bunch of talking <laughs> mice from Narnia? <laughs> Did anyone watch the TUC? Because he's obviously been told to smile a lot more, but it just looks weird when he smiles. He looks like a baby with gas. <laughs> <laughs> he just smiles at the wrong moment. You just kind of smile, Gordon. <laughs> Gordon Brown talking to the TUC must be like the two most boring entities in the universe coming together. <laughs> it's like Ken Barlow and Steve Davis getting together to discuss carpet samples. <laughs> It'll be so boring it will break time. <laughs> <laughs> what was horrible, it just leads to bigotry, isn't it? Because it just makes everyone go, like, if they're going to come over here, they need to learn English and they need to learn about our culture. And people who normally say that are the people you see in Benidorm going, Oi, Pedro, do you do chips? <laughs> but it was like, how, much, how much English do they really need? There's nothing that you can't ask someone to do with the words, mend this. Mm. Mend this. Make work again. Yeah. Make work. Oh, okay. There's nothing you can't get people to do without just pointing and nodding. Just... <laughs> 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 there, there, the language that only applies to skilled, there are, there are three levels. There's non-skilled, skilled and highly skilled. Highly skilled, apparently, only needed English from last December. Highly skilled is doctors and lawyers. Who employs a lawyer who can't speak English? <laughs> <laughs> Point at jury. Point at the jury. Yes. Oh, OK. <laughs> Get off. <laughs> Get off. <laughs> this, this man boy. is guilty. Remember <laughs> <laughs> they were doing it through guilty. mine? Yeah. I mean, God, they were doing it through mine. Him. <laughs> my guy. <laughs> I involved, my client yeah. was trapped in a box yeah. and couldn't get out. <laughs> then a large wind blew and he was forced backward. Did he steal the suitcase? He couldn't move. He was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't even apply. It's only uh, people from outside the EU, anyway. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, but footballers are exempt. Footballers are exempt. The only language they've got, isn't it? They only need two sentences. First of all, they need... Uh, at the end of the day, and then either sick as a parrot or over the moon. <laughs> and nip, and nip, 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 nip. nip. <laughs> Lots on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the idea of a load of asylum seekers in a van just going, I before E, except after C, I before E. <laughs> Politicians all now have to pretend not to be racist, yeah. despite the fact that they're all quite happy to be racist if they think it will get them votes. You know, so you see, like, Tories pretending not to be racist. Hey, it's, it's terrible, the controls they're putting on Eastern European immigration. Don't people know that these are the last prostitutes in the world that you can pay in turnips? <laughs> <laughs> not that I want to stereotype those people, because they can put a curse on you. <laughs> 
immigrants are becoming more racist now, because my mum is from Nigeria, and she's becoming as racist as the BNP. She's quite right-wing. She's like, that. oh, all these Polish people and all these Kosovans coming over here, taking our job. <laughs> I'm like, mum, you're an immigrant. Oh, no, not anymore. I have a British passport. <laughs> <laughs> Get that now and the points go to Russell, Gina and Andy! Yay! Now we play a round called Don't Put Your Nuts on the Road. <laughs> this game involves Ed, Andy, Frankie and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin <clears> our <throat> news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winner is the team I judge to produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is homelessness. Who wants to go on that? <laughs> Ross. I had a really great incident with a homeless bloke the other day. That sounds fairly dodgy. Um, <laughs> it was really... Uh, it's weirdly uplifting, so I, I gave him a pound and I was kind of walking away and he went, Oh, hey, mate, I've got a magic dog! Now, that is a sentence that buys you half an hour with me, right? <laughs> And he had sick all down him, this dog, right? And the homeless bloke had sick down him as well. And I was like, what happened? And he went, oh, we was asleep in a skip and some bloke chucked up on us. It's the most depressing thing you've ever heard. And he just looked at me and went, no, it was amazing. <laughs> like, really? Why is that? And apparently what he did, still covered in sick, he stood up in that skip and just went, <laughs> So this bloke was so drunk, he thought his vomit had come alive. <laughs> That man will never, ever drink again. Beer, Dave! It comes alive! It comes alive! <laughs> Lovely moment. Mm -hmm. well, then, <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is taxis. Who wants to come in that? Ah, <clears throat> uh, One thing I don't miss about London is uh, London cabbies. I used to live in Muswell Hill, a leafy suburb of London, about six miles north of here. That's what I thought when I bought the house. I get into a, a, a black cab in London's fashionable West End. Turned out, I lived in the arsehole of nowhere. Because <laughs> I'll get into a black cab and I'll go, Muswell Hill, please, and I'll get this. I go, no, mate, I'm not going that way. <laughs> like, he thinks it's a bus he's driving. <laughs> what do you mean you're not going that way? I'm not asking for a lift, you know. Like, whenever I get this now, I just get in anyway. I go, all right, fair enough. Where do you want to go? <laughs> That spins them right out of that nose, doesn't it? <laughs> you what? Come on, where do you want to go? I'm paying. <laughs> uh, no, mate, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Must well help, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Ed Byron. <laughs> OK, that leads us with Frankie and Andy to spin the wheel. <laughs> the next topic is transport. <laughs> I think the moral of that story is uh, never ride your horse on a runway. <laughs> <laughs> You're of course, not supposed to take planes anymore, not a problem for me. The thing that always mucks me up, that little monitor that you get, you know, outside air temperature, minus 56 degrees. I am inside the aircraft. <laughs> I have no intention... <laughs> going outside the aircraft. <laughs> and if I ever did find myself outside the aircraft, my initial response would not be, ooh, bit nippy. <laughs> well done, Andy. <laughs> OK, let's see what's been left for Frankie. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> uh, it's celebrity. There you go. It was uh, the anniversary of Elvis's death recently. People still think that Elvis faked his death. Surely if you were going to fake your death, you wouldn't do it in a shitting accident. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd do something brave, wouldn't you? Rescue a wee boy from a river. Surely not a jobby-related heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> With the anniversary of uh, Princess Diana's death, I thought that at the concert, only Ricky Gervais played, paid a, a true tribute to Diana by dying a painful and horrible death. <laughs> you can get, you know, you get celebrity sat-navs now. You can get a Princess Diana sat-nav. It just keeps saying, put your foot down, I think we can lose them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, that joke can go either way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. 
OK, give that round of applause to Russell and Andy. OK, now it's time for, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Gina, which category would you like? I think I'll go for health. Health, it is. The answer is Middlesbrough, Rill and Liverpool. What is the question? Um, in which three towns are you considered a lesbian if you're over 14 and haven't got six kids? <laughs> <laughs> Where are the three largest Lidls in the country? <laughs> Can you name three places that Ryanair claim are just outside Dubrovnik? <laughs> <laughs> is what it is... my car's been stolen and cut into three pieces? Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it what now constitutes a world tour for Jim Davidson? <laughs> <laughs> what three places did the British Health Board name as the axis of chips? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, what are the first three chapters of the book, Places Not to Grow Up Gay? <laughs> <laughs> what, what a Christmas present that would be. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say here, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what can you buy for 50 nectar points? <laughs> it's, to do with, it's to do with life expectancy, though. It, it is to do with life expectancy, three yes. Three of the lowest in the... Bottom ten for life expectancy. That's absolutely right. Well done, Ed. Very good. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> However, I will qualify this as what's known as a healthy life expectancy, the age of which serious illness strikes. The question I'm looking for is areas of which areas of which towns have the lowest expectancy of a healthy life. Figures compiled by the Office for National Statistics have shown that people living in the unhealthiest areas of England and Wales can expect to contract serious illness up to 30 years earlier than their counterparts in healthier areas. Anyone who's been to Middlesbrough know that 11 to 53 is maybe a bit long. <laughs> <laughs> it's, sort of, it's sort of like Blade Runner without the special effects. <laughs> and we can say what we like about them because they don't watch TV, they're all outside naked fighting. <laughs> but also, surely, if in some areas of town, you live 30 years less long than other areas of town, yeah. aren't you just important to move? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get to 52, go sod it. Maybe I'll buy a cottage where the life expectancy is a little bit well, longer. You're suddenly going to shoot up if you just move down the street yeah. suddenly and apparently, another 30 years. <laughs> Japan, it? apparently they live till 91 in Japan, so when we get to 80, we should all go, right, off to Japan, another 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> if I lived in one of those towns, I'd be delighted to die. <laughs> Oh, there's a sniper on top of the town hall. Great, let's get down there. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool, they can take a joke. They love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they were rolling in the aisles when I pointed out that they called their airport John Lennon Airport because it's the first place he went when he earned a bit of cash. <laughs> yeah. They love that one, I tell you. <laughs> Hey, I like Liverpool. Big theatres. Uh, <laughs> Didcot, apparently, your, your healthy life expectancy in Didcot, I have the top ten here, is 86 years. Didcot is only famous because it's got a giant power plant in the middle of it. It's a huge power plant. So these people are mutants. These are the <laughs> held up as like, some example to the rest of us. Like, they can't be killed. Uh, <laughs> it's this story, every so often, this same story comes up that up north, apparently, that all they eat is pies. It's just horrific. But then you think about it, if all they're going to do is eat pies and that, we should genetically modify pies and give them legs. And that way, you know, we can have the pies dance and go, Oi, fatty, you want to eat me, don't you? <laughs> you got to catch me first and just have... <laughs> and all the fruit and the veg and the healthy food just led there and the pies leg in it. Genetically By modify the way, Gary, a pie. Gary, <laughs> pies don't... They're not, like, born of a, of a large mother pie. <laughs> uh, that, that pops them out from a pie womb. And then they... You know, they're not actually individual living but creatures. We can, what I'm saying, we can make it happen. Well, you don't doubt it's right. There are definitely holes in your get... Pies to grow legs theory. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is not kill the cow, cover it in pastry, it can run on its own. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what was <laughs> avoid, <laughs> avoid the killing? <laughs> It would be quite a large pie. Think of the horror if a pie with human hands turned bad. Can you imagine <laughs> being throttled to death by a pie? <laughs> how, fairness, how, ironic, fairness, how ironic a death that would be to be killed <laughs> literally by a pie. Uh, <laughs> you knew I would get you eventually, says the pie who also has a mouth. Uh, <laughs> 
Would you give legs to a fish pie, or would that be just two against nature? Would it, would it, have, to, would it have to be fins to a fish pie? To be honest, I, I come up with the idea, then I just kick back and play golf. Nuts on the road. What I do... <laughs> I say, I just walk into a factory and declare at them, I want legs on pies! And then I walk out. Yeah, how? You go, don't give me how. I'm not the how yeah. guy. Yeah. I pay you to be the how guy. Yeah. I just get the idea. <laughs> you fill in the yeah, details. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I can't believe that Glasgow hasn't appeared on this table. It's, it's this we're table, doing everything right. This table is for England and Wales. Ah. You have your own, much like football, you have your own if league. You know, <laughs> of, a much lower, of a much lower level anyway. Uh, you're basically in a health dungeon. <laughs> you would screw with the figures so yeah. much. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We could actually improve our life expectancy by introducing crocodiles. <laughs> 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 At least that's exercise. Uh... Do you not just carry a guard pie around with you that would attack people? <laughs> Mr Dennis, welcome to the executive board. He's thinking out loud. <laughs> Oh, of course, that's no. the next plan. He's moving up the corporate ladder really yeah. quickly, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> OK, oh, I almost dread uh, asking the next question. What have science has been given the go-ahead to create this week? Monkey Porno pies! pies. <laughs> Porno pies! Porno pies? Porno pies. Oh, they turn up to do your plumbing, they open up with a steak inside. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of pornos are you watching? <laughs> Some steak, yeah. Well, oh, that's got me up the runway. I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to get on your corporate ladder, you racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quandary. Oh, what can I, I say to that? You I have say that never <laughs> seen the race car fall so beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> that was, you know, that was a, a, there was a pair of ace race yeah. cars. Oh, yeah. I got bullets. Yeah. <laughs> What have scientists been given? I'll ask the question again. <laughs> what have scientists been given the go-ahead to create this week? Monkey Can't butlers. Be... Not monkey butlers. <laughs> it's close, though. It's, they've yeah. been given the go-ahead to create human-animal hybrids. Yes, they have, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And they're, the scientists are very excited because they've already had tremendous success with Wayne Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's... All right, he's injured. <laughs> He's injured at the minute, but the boy's got spirit. He's prowling the touchline like a caged potato. <laughs> <laughs> One of the quotes from a Newcastle, Lyle Armstrong of Newcastle University um, oh, said this, just to reassure people, it's not our intention to create any bizarre cow-human hybrid. Why not? <laughs> because we already have, we never felt. A failure of imagination on behalf of Newcastle University. Not to, that's, that's almost the first thing I'd want to do. Oh, sorry, how, yeah. how you doing, Mick? Moo. All right, moo to you as well. <laughs> How is the Church of England? How is the Church of England trying to cheer us all up? They had something recently, didn't they? The Church of England brought out prayers for a Monday morning that you could use if you were stressed. So oh, it was like yeah. a prayer you, you say if you're on a train and you can't find a seat. And this yes, kind of stuff. yeah, there's a commuter's prayer. Yeah, when, when I'm on a train, I pray loudly to Allah and I generally get the whole carriage. <laughs> 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 Again, that round points go to Russell, Jean, and Andy. Yay! <laughs> now we come to our final quick-fire round call. Scenes we'd like to see. It's for everyone, so if you could make your way over to the performance area, please. I call ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> the first subject is what a news reporter would never say. Next on News 24, I'm going to punch a zebra. <laughs> Who cares? No one's watching. <laughs> Here, children as young as eight are forced to earn their own living. More polish! More polish! I want to see my face! <laughs> Here on the streets, it seems that Britain is completely in the grip of gang culture. This is John Simpson. For the ITN Massive! <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear the bombs falling? No? That's because they're in Baghdad. I'm here in Peckham. <laughs> <laughs> Reports of a mystery man loitering in the area turned out to be me. <laughs> News just in. Go to a break. Your wife's been hit by a truck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And it was just a few feet from here that the shots were fired. I know, I fired them. <laughs> well, finally, the power in Beirut seems to be back on. The radiator I'm chained to is getting quite warm. <laughs> <laughs> Even amidst the devastation of this earthquake, there are still stories of hope. I found a man's wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I am actually in my bedroom, but I'm trying to make it look like I'm in Baghdad on a satellite phone. <laughs> <laughs> And I can't help thinking that if my country was gripped by famine, I'd just move. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is... Unlikely letters to be read out on points of view. Why, oh, why, oh, why is the structure of my chromosomes? <laughs> <laughs> Dear BBC, I watched a light entertainment programme on your network the other night that wasn't hosted by Graham Norton. Is he ill? <laughs> Dear BBC, how did you manage to get those hippos to swim in a circle? <laughs> Dear BBC, I am a Nigerian general with £30 million to put in your bank account. <laughs> Last night, I turned on to your new porn channel. Sea boobies. <laughs> Dear points of view, I would like to complain about the weird voice you're reading out my letter in. <laughs> Dear points of view, has anyone else noticed the Pat Butcher looks a lot like the honey monster from the Sugar Puff family? <laughs> <laughs> Dear BBC, when are you going to show Nuts on the Road? <laughs> nim, nim, nim. <laughs> Dear points of view, I watched Silent Witness with the sound off and it didn't make any sense. <laughs> Dear BBC, well, it's now 30 years down the line and I'm no closer to owning a robotic housemaid. Tomorrow's world, tomorrow's horseshit, more like. <laughs> The other night, I watched Nigella Lawson and picked up a couple of good tips on baking bread. And in the process, I just about ripped my cock off. <laughs> <laughs> OK, point to the end of that round. Go to Russell, Gina and Andy! <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Jeannie Ashray and Russell Howard. For commiserations to Frankie Boyer, Hugh Dennis and Ed Byrne. Thank you for watching. I'm Diary. Good night. The World According to Tommy Saxondale, a careers talk with a difference next tonight. And then the comedy continues with that Mitchell and Webb look at 10. Thursday night comedy on BBC Two.